84,000 ways of practice that have been talked about previously in the chapter, in the sutra. Uh, but now, finally, somebody comes forward to put them all into practice. So we had theory, and now it's the practice. So, uh, and we have reached the part in our sutra that I've been uh, prepping everybody for all these months, saying uh, we have to patiently go through the, the preamble until we finally get to our pilgrim arriving. Well, he's here. Sudana Shantai Tungzi. And he is uh, in the process of singing a praise to his first mentor, Manjushri Bodhisattva. So that's where we catch him today. All right, let's move forward in our protocols. Here we go. We're going to invoke spiritual presence. and chant the name of the sutra and the Buddhas and Bodhisattvas. So if you'd care to join me, please do. Furthermore, we respectfully acknowledge the Kombu Meri people of the Ugambi language region as traditional storytellers and custodians of the land where our monastery is located. We pay our respects to their elders past, present, and emerging, and to all First Nations people whose sovereignty was never ceded. We are very happy to bring the Avatamsaka Sutra to the Ugambi language region, a place where the longest continuous human civilization Civilization on our planet. Now we bring one of the oldest wisdom systems to Australia. We are going to the Yuan Juming Chi. Moving forward here through the Pomo people, through the Ohlone people, and getting to our bell song. The bell sound wide resounds. Out a hundred million worlds, the Buddha's law is heard and spread all throughout the triple world. The wondrous sounds that everywhere fill the Dharma realm with peace, 
May those who hear it gain the strength to follow in faith the Buddha's path. Zhong Shang Chuan San Qian Jie Nei Fo Fa Yang Wan Yi Guo Zhong Gong Xuan Qi Fa Jie He Ping Li Yi Bao Tan No Hou Zhe That does it for the protocols. Now, uh, some of you sharp-eyed listeners may have noticed that I'm not in the Buddha Hall at GCDR. And the reason for that is that we are bowing the Emperor Liang's repentance liturgy over in the Buddha Hall. And there's some 50-some people from multiple countries around the world gathered for a week for a repentance fahui, a repentance liturgy, and a Dharma assembly here. And so it's a very special time. And in order to yield, seed to them the, uh, the Buddha Hall, let the repentance continue, I've moved to the broadcast towers here at Gold Coast Dharma Realm 102, uh, Benogan Road, <laughs> which is to say my office. Um, and it's a homemade affair, indeed it is. So that's a good thing, I think, because on one hand, um, to really do credit to the Avatamsaka, to respect it the way it should be respected, um, Shifu would say, Ruli Bobing. Uh, at, we should be as if walking on thin ice, just be so respectful, because the chance to hear the Avatamsaka Sutra is very rare and special. Um, so, bi gong bi jing, you know, you want to be really uh, cherish every word and every minute that you can look into this wisdom mirror that's been on the planet uh, amid humanity for so, so long. On the other hand, the way the master, Master Shenhua, in his nine years of lecturing on the sutra, the way he presented it was down home, grassroots. Um, I guess the difference is the respect that he paid was not artificial. It wasn't posed. It wasn't performed. So the adornments came from the light that was generated by three things, by the sutra itself, by the uh, precepts of the, and the cultivation of the, the, the lecturer, Master Xuanhua, who was working like a lens of a camera, and then the needs of the audience, the we living beings who gathered to hear him speak, that combination, the sutra, the lecture, and the potentials, they say, the needs, the qi yuan, uh, qi yuan, there it is, uh, all that generated light. And when Master Hua would climb up to the Dharma seat at Gold Mountain Monastery, uh, it would be a dark, cold winter's evening in San Francisco where the sun set at 4.30 and it was cold, but there was this bright light kindled when he opened the sutra. And you just had a feeling of being cozy and cared for and safe and had a feeling of purity uh, just in the, the act of coming to focus our consciousness on the sutra. Just that was enough. We were in a converted mattress factory with brick walls uh, no comforts, bare wood, so adorned, spectacularly beautiful, not, and yet the light and the, the unmistakable chi, that energy of this love for the Buddha's wisdom and a wish to uh, make it connect with our hearts, that was, that was what it took. So I have this lovely Guan Yin Pusa behind me and a heart sutra in Chinese on the wall, so... That's uh, uh, due to the kindness of donors who've made these beautiful uh, 
sacred objects available, you know. So to, to bring it, uh, for me to sit here at my desk and explain the Avatamsaka Sutra, let's see if we can generate that amount of sincerity to, to make it, uh, uh, to bring the light forward. So that's the goal. Alrighty, uh, where are we? We are here. There it is. Now, we called this uh, last week, starting here. Scroll up to where it was. Starting here, we called this um, Sudhana's song to Manjushri. Once again, to fill in, to get everybody on the same page, literally on the same page, this being the page, um, Manjushri Bodhisattva has come to a city called Blessings City. And he's gone to the east of town to a park. It's a, a grove. They mentioned the trees there. And in that park, there is a, a building it's a ta, it's a stupa, a religious building that's there to house relics. And this particular park and grove and stupa have a sacred history. That is to say, this is a place where Buddhas and Bodhisattvas have come before. Manjushri is not a Buddha in our story. He's a Bodhisattva, but people who have followed the, the teaching career of Manjushri Bodhisattva will tell you that he's been a Buddha before and he has a future Buddhahood indeed. He has come to help our Buddha, Shakyamuni, explain the Avatamsaka Sutra. That's what he's here to do in our story. So there he is and oh my goodness, uh, big deal for the city of Blessings, Fu Cheng, it's called. So uh, to honor that, there have been 500 upasikas, 500 laymen, distinguished citizens, the banker, the mayor, the postmaster, the butcher, probably, the greengrocer, the fisher, fish, fisher, fish, fishing boat captain, and all the moms have come, the grandmoms have come, the wise women have come, the chai circle has come, all the different members of society from top to bottom, inside out, uh, who have affinities with the Buddha and the Dharma have come streaming down, bringing their lunch baskets, bringing their cushions and their blankets to sit and listen to Manjushri. Furthermore, not only the adults have come, but it specifies that young people have come. Tong zi, tong nu, tong nan, tong nu. Um, maidens and young men have arrived, 500 of each. Total of 2,000 people are specified here. 500 upasikas, 500 upasikas, 500 kumaras, and then kumaris, the young men and young women. So there they all are, 2,000 people. And Manjushri identifies Sudhana as someone who's got a fu future. There's a role for him to play in our story. He is about to set off on a pilgrimage. Now, there are certain things that have to happen before he does that, which is he needs instruction from Manjushri. So the tradition in Buddhism is you request Dharma. Qing Fa. And it was interesting that uh, Master Hua, um, as he introduced us to the, the value and the joy of listening to sutras, which he, Master Hua took 90 minutes of every night and then twice on Saturday, twice on Sunday, explaining Mahayana sutras every single night. Didn't miss a night pointing out to us their value, saying, you need to look at these things. You need to open them up. You need to actually 
put your fingers on the pages and turn them and then think about what they say and then see if you can't explain it in another language, he would say. So he, we learned that how important, uh, what, a, what a benefit, what a blessing lies between the covers of Buddha Sutras. So to, and Shurfu was, I think just I want to point that out, that most, if you want to learn about the Mahayana, about the, the northern tradition of the Buddhist teachings that went from India to China, and then to Korea, and then to Japan, and also to Vietnam, and also to the, uh, it, it traveled further to Nepal and Tibet and Mongolia, um, and then on to the west. Go to monasteries where there are Sangha members who keep that tradition alive. However, that will not necessarily guarantee you that you'll have access to the Buddha's teachings. Why? Most monasteries take the Tripitaka and put it behind a beautiful glass door case. A bookshelf, glass doors, maybe there's an incense burner in front of it, and it's extremely respectful and beautiful, not a fingerprint on them. <laughs> the problem is mostly people don't take them out There's because the tripitaka has got a hundred volumes and it's a little imposing. You think, oh, I can't read it very well. So we'll, we'll keep it, we'll bow to it. We might recite it when we get a chance, but we don't, mostly we don't read. Master Hua said, that's to miss the opportunity. He said, this is like a mirror where you can see your true face. This is like an oracle that you have to ask before you want to get the future and the truth. This is like a mirror. This is like a, uh, uh, he said, it's, it's your best friend. This is like food that you can't be without for even a day because your fa shen hui ming, your dharma body and your wisdom, life of wisdom, will go hungry if you don't look into the sutra. So it is a recipe for personal psychotherapy. It will explain your mind to you in a way that if you got a, a knot that you can't untie, open the sutra and read it with respect, suddenly you realize, oh, hmm, that's the way out of my problem, right? He said that's, that's the value of sutras. So clearly he made them accessible. He wanted them to shorten the distance between those books in the bookshelf with the glass doors and your daily life, my daily needs. So um, how different from people who even go so far as to say, oh, those Buddha sutras, you explain a single word wrong and you're in danger. The Buddha is going to send you to hell if you do that. And truly that attitude is out there. Jiang cuo di yi ju, jiu xia di yu, they say. Oh my goodness. Or they'll say, oh, it's too much philosophy. This is just the highest philosophy, especially that Avatamsaka Sutra. No, that's, you can't understand it. It's not for us. Well, if you really want to understand it, go to those commentaries. There are commentaries from the Tang Dynasty. Read the commentaries because they're closer to it. They can interpret it for you. Not my experience at all. When I, when I read uh, some traditional commentaries in the Avatamsaka, I'm left in the dust. Now, that's not true for the commentary by Master Chengguan, Qingliang Guoshi, uh, who was the fourth of the Avatamsaka traditional ancestral patriarchs. His commentaries are very, very useful, and I've depended upon them. I consulted them today for today's lecture. So anyway, you get the point. So Shurfu said, do open those sutras. You need, we need their wisdom to get through the day. If we truly understand the Avatamsaka's principles, he said, there is no strain, there is no um, portion of contemporary Western scholarship that you won't, will not be able to apply the Avatamsaka principles and get insight into. 
no matter be it social science, be it political science, be it laboratory science, including quantum physics, all of these disciplines, when we understand cause and effect, for example, or the interpenetration of phenomena, if we understand those principles and apply them, the contemporary disciplines, academic disciplines go, the Buddha said that? When did he say that? Well, that's remarkable. Why haven't I heard this before? Well, it hasn't been in English before, dude. So, you get the point. Okay, so here we are. Master Hua said, if you want to uh, develop a relationship with this fountain of wisdom, you request Dharma. Request Dharma. He said, Samantabhadra teaches us that. He said, Yao Ching Zhuan Fa Lun. That's one of his vows, one of his ten vows. Please turn the Dharma wheel. So, guess what is going on in today's lecture? Sudhana is requesting Dharma. He is. He is Ching Fa. Last week, uh, we heard at that time, the use Sudhana, having heard from Manjushri about the various excellent virtues of the Buddha, single-mindedly, diligently sought Anuttara Samyak Sambodhi. He followed Manjushri and chanted the following verse. And we read them. We read 15 verses where Sudhana is doing just that. He is Ching Fa talking about his uh, the situation with living beings in the Saha world here and how we suffer in a human body because of affliction. And then at this point, right here, the pure son of wondrous wisdom whose grant great compassion forms a perfect wheel which dries up the ocean of afflictions, please pay attention to me. He's saying, us. He's representing the 2,000 people standing, sitting there uh, as he kneels in front of Manjushri. So then he goes on and he talks, he calls Manjushri a pure moon of wondrous wisdom, shine on me, calls him king of the Dharma realm, give me some instruction, calls him a great merchant of blessings and wisdom. Please protect me, he says, like a merchant chief guiding a caravan through dangerous lands to where they want to trade their goods at the end of the road. He calls him a great general, donning the armor of forbearance. Please rescue me from the demon armies. What else? He calls him Lord Chakra, or Indra, living up on Mount Sumeru in the top of, mount, top of the mountain. He uh, calls him a humane one, like a lamp showing the way. He says, you who renounce evil paths and pursue good, show me the door out of the mundane world. In a world that's inverted and attached, the, the wisdom eye, you who possess the wisdom eye and Nirvana's four qualities, open the door of liberation to me. Okay? What does it sound like? It sounds like Ching Fa, doesn't it? Look at how this uh, young man really knows how to do it. He is there. He's kind of like spoken word poetry. And his verses are brief. They're short. They're uh, to the point. They're enthusiastic. Uh, as I read the, uh, the eloquent rhyme, and they're not rhyming. They're metered verses in Chinese, certainly. I'm sure they were in Sanskrit, too. As we investigate the, uh, uh, the poetry, just these heartfelt verses that Sudhana is singing, chanting to his first mentor, you really get a feeling here of a young person, somebody who is very enthusiastic, who is not artful, he's not cunning, he's not sophisticated, he's straight and upfront. Uh, Show me the Bodhi road. I want to get to, to enlightenment. I want it. What do we want? Enlightenment. When do we want it? Now. Right? That's what he's saying. You know the right and the wrong paths. Show me the Bodhi road. Says, you're here in the Buddha's proper views ground. Show me the Bodhi way. Uh, Buddhas are the past, present, and future everywhere like the sun in the world. 
teach me the Tao, he says. So you really get the feeling of his Tian Zhen Wu Xie, they say. He is uh, innocent and free from uh, falseness, nothing crooked about Sudhana's mind. He's straight and pure. And for this reason, for this reason, Manjushri has said, you're the one. We're going we're gonna to get you all the way across the finish line. And the last verse last week, you know about karma and understand others' ways, one of decisive wisdom, please, shi wo mo he yin. I want to know how to walk the bodhisattva path. All right. Now, um, another point to make out, to, another point to point out, is that um, Sudhana's request is still focused on himself. He hasn't opened the, the infinite uh, mind ground that is like empty space. He's not in touch with the great compassion that he will be taught about as he progresses. He's still uh, focused on, you know, show me how to get enlightened. I want to show me the Bodhi way. I want to find the Tao. Teach it to me because I'm excited about it. I'm really enthusiastic. And that's a good place for a beginner to, to travel, to come from. Um, one of the um, remarkable aspects of what's about to happen to this young man is he is going to set out to encounter 52, or by another count, 53 teachers. That's the point of his pilgrimage, is Sudhana, there are certain kind of uh, catchwords by which we know Sudhana. He is, they say, Shan Sai Tong Zi Wu Shi San San. The young man Sudhana and his 53 teachers. So what he does is he goes out upon instruction from one to the next, successively encounters 53 Shan Zhi Shi, Kalyana Mitra, good spiritual friends. We used to translate as good and wise advisors, as Chinglish, shan, zhi, shi, good and wise advisors. So he, he uh, these are his spiritual friends, his mentors, his teachers. And one by one by one, he goes out and asks them the, the questions that he wants answered. There are two. He, want, he, has, he needs answers to two questions. One is, how do I walk Bodhisattva path, how do I cultivate Bodhisattva practices? That's what he knows he needs, that's what he wants them to give him. And they, in turn, without exception, interestingly enough, one by one, these teachers say to him, Good man, Shan Nanzi, Ru Yi Fa Da Pu Ti Xin Fao, have you made the great Bodhi resolve? the bodhicitta, the thought for enlightenment? That's their question. And that is a test. He's getting, he gets tested back. And Sudhana, for each and every one of them, says, Wei, Yes, I have. I made the great Bodhi resolve a while back. And the teachers go, oh, good. Hot dog. All right, let's get to work. And they roll up their sleeves and they teach him a new practice, their new Dharma method. So, what's really interesting, as we are now on the brink, we're on the eve of his setting off to that first teacher, as he progresses, 54, 53, Wushasan, 53, 21 of them are women. Almost half of the Kalyanamitra, who respond to him, are women. They're in women's bodies as they teach him. And, I mean, that fact by itself is remarkable in, uh, to show us the uh, democratic 
the non-differentiated Buddha's compassionate heart, that the Dharma realm of humans is only half male. It's half female. Right? So that's, that's remarkable. It says so right here in our religious text. Our, sutra, our scriptures show Sudhana receiving teachings from 21 women, including the Buddha's mother, Lady Maya, huh. including a courtesan, a woman of the night, named, um, oops, what's her name? We'll, we'll find out. Including 10 Zhu Ye, uh, Zhu Ye Shan, women, uh, spirits who rule the night, who are feminine. Oh my goodness, including Anupasika, Upasika Asha, including Bhikshunis, who, uh, Bhikshuni Lion Sprint. Oh my goodness, all of these uh, wonderful teachers teach him compassion. So that fact itself, that almost half of his, the authority figures in Sudhana's life are in female bodies. But more importantly, what those females teach him progressively is how to expand the measure of his heart, to open up his compassion. Um, the, there's a, this, this is something that a lot of people are unaware of. In among 52, 53 advisors of Sudhana, there is a love story. Uh, he encounters a, a maiden who uh, falls in love with a prince, and the prince responds by falling in love with the maiden, and they uh, have a they have a relationship. They get married, and there are conditions. There, it's a prenup. <laughs> they, uh, the the prince is all for it, and then he says, you know, on second thought. I don't think you should marry me. And she goes, why? And he says, because in the future, um, I'm probably going to want to cultivate the way. I'm probably going to want to leave home and, and really do it full time. And she says, no problem. I may have left home before you do. Me too, she says. I go, oh, okay, in that case, let's, let's go ahead. And then she says, you know, on second thought, maybe it's not a good idea because at some point I may decide that I need to donate part of my body to somebody who comes and asks for it. Maybe somebody needs an eye or a, a kidney and you'll be really upset if I cut my body up to donate to people who need it. And the prince says, no, 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 I fully understand and I may join you. So. So the two of them have made similar vows in the past and they get married and there it is in the sutra and they they both talk about each other's qualities, how handsome he is and how learned and virtuous she is and you know, there it is right there in the sutra. They teach Sudhana about compassion. So how interesting that this, this chapter is uh, how you take when Shurfu says the Avatamsaka Sutra is like a mirror that shows us our true face and it's like a, uh, a manual for doing our own psychotherapy in the world. There it is. Sudhana goes out into the world cultivating the way and uh, wakes up. Okay. Today that song that he sings to Manjushri takes another turn. The next 17 verses say, Ling Wo Zai Zi Sheng, Cheng. May I, let me, please let me ride in that car. I'm going to retranslate these verses, I've, I've decided that carriage is probably dated, so it's not that in our culture now we lack vehicles. No, we have many vehicles. So uh, we're going to update it a bit. We'll go through 
with the current text and then redo it for the song part. Okay? So, does that make sense? The answer is not yet. Okay, we'll see if we can make it work. All right. Okay. Ling Okay, a little bit different wording in the last line. Chang Juan Bu Shirlun Hang Tu Jing Jie Xiang Ren Ru Lao Zhuang Yan Ling Wu Zai Zi Sheng Chan Ding San Mei Xiang Zhi Hui Fang Bian U Tiao Fu Bu Tui Zhuan Ling Wu Zai Zi Sheng Continue. To continue, Guang Da Chi Ching Jing Pu Yu Jung Sheng Le Shu Kong Fa Jie Deng Ling O Zai Zi Sheng Jing Zhu Ye Huo Lun Oh boy. Okay, how are we doing? Continuing here. Ching Jing Ru Shu Kong. I gen she to me, Lee e che jung, Ling o zai zi sheng, Yuan li su ji xing, Ying xin an wen zhu, Pu yun zhu han shi, Ling o zai zi sheng. If you can read the Chinese, sing along, right? Ru di bu ching dong, Ru shui pu rao yi, Rushi Yun Jung Sheng Ling O Zai Zi Sheng Si She Yan Man Lun Zong Shi Qing Jing Guang Rushi Zhi Hui Ri Yuan Shi Wo Ling Jian And finally Yi Ru Fa Wang Sheng Yi Zhuo Zhi Wang Guan Yi Shi Miao Fa Zeng Yuan Neng Zi Gu Wo Alrighty, that's the conclusion of Manjushri's request of Dharma. Okay, we're going to, here's the deal. Um, Okay, here's what we're going to do. We'll read through just 
without singing and go all the way down. Then I'm going to come do it again with a bit of musical background. And then we're going to come back and explain. Okay. With compassion as the hub of its wheel of boughs, its axle composed of faith, its linchpin of endurance, adorned with excellent virtues, may I ride upon that carriage. With a wide grand body of Durrani and a canopy of empathy and compassion, it rings with chimes of eloquence, may I ride upon that carriage. Brahma practices are its cushions, Samadhi, its maidens in waiting. Dharma drums resound with wondrous sounds. May I ride upon that carriage. Endless its store of four attractions, decorated with jewels of virtue. Shame forms the halters of its steeds. May I ride upon that carriage. Always turning its wheels of giving, forever anointed with pure precepts fragrance. Patience, its sturdy adornment. May I ride upon that carriage. The body is dhyana and samadhi, its collar, clever expedience, subdued and non-retreating as it is. May I ride upon that carriage. Great vows are its immaculate wheels, dharani, its solid power, accomplished as it is by wisdom. May I ride upon that carriage. With universal conduct, its circumference. A compassionate heart, its composed turning. Towards all, it is without fear. May I ride upon that carriage. Solid like Vajra, clever like illusions and transformations, unobstructed in all things, may I ride upon that carriage. Vast, great, of utmost purity, bestowing joy on all beings, like emptiness in the Dharma realm. May I ride upon that carriage. The wheels purify delusions and halt the flow of suffering, smashing demons and heresy. May I ride upon that carriage. Yeah, leaving a trail of smashed demons on the road. Wisdom fills every direction. Adornments fill the Dharma realm, fulfilling all beings' wishes. May I ride upon that carriage. Pure and clear like space, with love and views no more, with benefits for all, may I ride upon that carriage. The swift practice of bow power, the calm dwelling of a concentrated mind, carrying all creatures, may I ride upon that carriage. There we pay attention there. As stable as the earth, benefiting all things like water, carrying all beings thus. May I ride upon that carriage. The four attractions form a perfect wheel. Dharani is a pure, clear light. May such a wisdom sun as this appear so that I can see. Finally, you climbed the stage of Dharma King and donned the crown of wisdom's master, wrapped as you are with wonderful Dharma silk. Pray regard me with compassion. With that last verse, we see Manjushri sitting there listening to this young man asking one wish. He's got, he's very clear about what he wants. He wants to ride on a car, particular car, the Mahayana, and it's big, it's a big one. Now, the, uh, the Chinese is not the same. Out of 17, 12 are ling wo zai zi cheng. Please let me ride or drive that car. He may be saying, I want to drive that car. Um, once, one time, he says, shi wo zai. Uh, make it possible, allow me to drive that car, to ride in that car. Um, twice, he says, please give me this car. 
uh, the last two, please make it, make it possible for me to see. Please give me eyes to see. And then the last one, he says, uh, please look at me with kindness. Please kindly look at me. Right, so the, the, that last, yet uh, may I ride in this carriage, has variations. And I think the variations are significant. So here we go. Let me ride in this car. Um, is that, let's make it bigger so everybody can see. I think that is a possible translation of this. Let me ride in this car. Um, instead of uh, carriage. Now, it does specify at some point um, fixings that are suitable for horses. And in the previous set of 15, there was the bit and reins and uh, horses and the bridle. Um, so that's clearly references to, to uh, horse-drawn vehicles. So that kind of dates it. Um, but I'm interested in seeing, uh, in, in getting past the cultural limitations or the dating of a text and getting to what is universal and timeless and seeing if we can't uh, bring it up to the 21st century. So let me ride in this car instead of carriage. Uh, might be the zai, this word here, can also mean to be carried by or to drive, maybe. So, okay, as I was working with this new translation, let me drive this, what, vehicle? Yeah, great vehicle, Mahayana, mm -hmm. small vehicle, great vehicle. Let me drive this carriage. Carriages, clearly, we don't do carriages these days. Um, chariot, we, even less do we do chariots. We do buses, we do vans, we do SUVs. Conveyance. That's a generic term for all these different kinds of wheeled vehicles. But that's what he wants. And if you, this is kind of funny. Um, growing up in North America in the 60s and 70s, Southern California was famous for its hot rod culture, muscle cars. Uh, it was a specialty of Southern California, LA down to San Diego and up to Monterey. On Highway 101, Pacific Coast Highway, Highway 1 or Highway 5, people would drive their hot rods. And there was a culture of praising those cars in song exactly like Sudhana's praise. Look, what's he doing? The hub, the wheel, the linchpin, the wide body, the canopy, the chimes, the seat cushions, jewels, turning its wheels, the body, the collar, immaculate wheels, right, circumference, etc. He's praising a car, isn't he? And you wonder, <laughs> could, uh, if we were to find something similar, she's my little deuce coop, you don't know what I got, the Beach Boys. Now, I never thought I'd be talking about the Beach Boys in the Avatomska lecture, but take a look. So I got the fastest set of wheels in town. She's my little deuce coupe. She got a flathead mill. She'll race a thunderbird like she's standing still. She's ported, she's relieved, she's stroked, she's bored. She did 140 with a top end floored. She's my little deuce coupe. You don't know what I got. Here are the Beach Boys. Brian Wilson, right? Praising his car 
And we who had transistor radios were, I was in the Midwest, so, but my mind turned to Southern California when I heard my custom machine. She's a metal flake blue with a Corvette grill. Looks better when she's standing still, but I step on her grass and she goes, wah. Naga hide bucket seats in front and back. Everything is chrome, man, even my jack. When I step on the gas, she goes, wah. Now, is there wisdom and compassion in these, the Beach Boys songs? No, 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 no. But it's car culture and it's young men praising their vehicles. Look at this, super stock Dodge winding out in low. My fuel injected stingray is really starting to go. To get the traction, I'm riding the clutch. My pressure plate's burning. That machine's too much. <laughs> so here's, the, yeah, okay. Ronnie in the Daytona sang about the little GTO, praising its carburetors, its four speeds, gearbox, and its uh, cubic inches in the engine. Oh my goodness, how funny. To, uh, when I was reading the uh, Sudanese praise of his car with all the qualities, talking about each and every, compassion is the hub of the wheel of vows, axle composed of faith, linchpin of endurance, wide grand body of Durrani, she's my little deuce coupe, you don't know what I got. <laughs> anyway, just to make the point that young men love their vehicles, how else do we understand Sudana? He's a young man, he's made the Bodhi resolve, and he wants to ride in that car. With compassion as the hub, of its wheels of vows, its axle composed of faith, its linchpin of endurance, adorned with excellent virtues. Let me drive this car. Let me drive this car with a wide grand body of Durrani and a canopy of empathy and compassion it rings with chimes of eloquence let me ride Trauma practices are its cushions, Samadhi its maidens in waiting. Dharma drums resound, the wondrous sounds. Please give me the scar, and you what's a charm. Endless its store of four attractions decorated with jewels of virtue. Shame forms altars of its steeds, please give me the scar. 
give me the scar. Always turning its wheels of giving, forever anointed with pure precepts fragrance. Patience is sturdy adornment. Let me ride in the scar. Please let me ride in the scar. Body is the honor and the samadhi. It's color, clever experience. So good and non retreating it is. So that's, uh, you can visualize Sudhana kneeling there in front of Manjushri and asking him for the Dharma. Now, what he wants is he's not sure yet, and Manjushri knows. Anjushri knows that Sudhana is going to evolve. The process of cultivating the Bodhisattva way is one of gradual growth and maturation. Uh, they, they talk about your good roots coming ripe and your accumulation of blessings and the brightening of your merit and virtue and the, the vows are deepening. So it's clearly, it's, a, it's an education and he has to go to class. It takes him years. This, this pilgrimage he's about to start out on is a long-term process. Uh, many years pass and Sudhana, as he um, visits the teachers, he goes through very relatable experiences. He gets afraid. He gets terrified. He gets ignored. Some of the teachers say nothing at all. <laughs> uh, he goes through danger. Uh, his life is at risk several times. He gets uh, seduced, you could say, by uh, the by the courtesan. <coughs> Vimala is her name. Vimala. Um, he makes great friends, and he gets really inspired as he goes. And the um, what he's asking for now here. Let's take a look. Notice how many times the word Dharani comes up. Isn't that interesting? Uh, I didn't realize that until I looked into these uh, verses. So now we've put music to, to a little bit of it. We've uh, looked all the way through. Now we're going to go uh, verse by verse, okay? And see what it says. Compassion is the hub, axle, and linchpin. So he goes right to the center of the wheel. Wheels, the value of the wheel is what's missing, the hole in the center so you can put the axle on it. Compassion is the, that space that you can fit living beings in, in this case the axle. And the axle is faith, the pin that holds the axle to the wheel doesn't break it endures there are lots of virtues virtues here can i ride on that car give me a seat in that car the wide big body of durrani and a canopy of empathy and compassion 
and a decoration. It rings. Dingle, dingle, ding. I want to ride that car, that vehicle. Now, um, when I checked Master Chongguan's uh, Tang Dynasty commentary, he referred to the other, another appearance in the Buddhist teaching of carts. And of course, it's the parable chapter from the Lotus Sutra, where the, y'all know the story? Let me, we, there we go. So in the Lotus Sutra, the parable chapter, the, there's a, an elder who is very wise, and he's in charge of a bunch of young people. The young people are, the sutra casts them as heedless. They are heedless young people. That is to say, they are totally unaware of their surroundings. They are only driven by their immediate desires, their next false thought. They just have a thought rises in their mind, they race out after it. And they're in a dilapidated house. The sutra, the Lotus Sutra des describes this house that they're in in kind of terrifying ways. It's falling apart and it's scary. And it's a metaphor for the world, the Saha world. Oh, the house that the children are playing in is a dangerous place. And the elder knows it. And what does he do? He thinks, oh, you know what? Look, there's smoke coming out of the house. It's on fire. And the sutra describes this burning house as our world, the Saha world, where they say there's not a good place in it because it's all made up. The bigger body of the earth and our smaller body, our body, our human body, flesh and blood body, are both composed of things that come apart, fall apart. Our bodies get sick, our bodies get old. The planet has growing pains and the earth shakes and mountains turn into seas and meteors hit it. And so, not a safe place in this smaller body or the bigger body of the earth. So the elder looks and he goes, whoa, it's on fire. How am I going to get my children safely out of the burning house? And of course, metaphorically, the Buddha is the elder and he wants to get us out of the burning house of the world and the burning house of our bodies. So, oh, that Lotus Sutra, wow. Truth telling, yeah. Not a happy story. People say, oh, you Buddhists, it's all suffering all the time with you Buddhists. Yeah, but there's a time for awakening too. You can't be asleep all the time. So don't recognize the fact the house is burning. Now in 2024, it's a little easier to see it because the true nature of the burning house is evident in the Middle East. So, to the sutra, the problem that the elder faces is how to get the kids out to safety. And his answer is so interesting. He says, children, come out. I've got things you'll like out here. Come on out. Who wants to be the first one? Can I give you a deer cart? Probably a Volkswagen. Maybe a motorbike. Can I give you a dog cart? It might be uh, a Vespa or a bike, electric bike. Uh, can I give you, how, what would you like? How about if I give you uh, deer carts, goat cart? How about a goat cart pulled by goats? Strong goats, nice. You can feed them. Come on out, I'll give you these really fun playthings. And the kids kind of go, huh? Really? All right. We'll come out. Can you tuck an iPhone on the seat? We'll come out for that. And so they come out and the elder says, you know what? I don't have 
any of those carts, but I do have a big cart drawn by a white colored ox. It's a great da by Niocha. It's a great it's a cart drawn by a really big, strong, beautiful white ox, and he can carry all of you in it. And sorry, I didn't deliver with the deer cart, the dog cart, and the goat cart, but here's an ox cart. That's the one that you want. Of course, the metaphors are flying left and right. The great white ox cart is the Mahayana, because all living beings fit inside. And successfully, the children come running out of the house, and the elder saves them. He had to tell a white lie in the process. Interestingly, how the sutra describes that. That, uh, yeah, it's, he, he's not exactly telling entirely the truth, but he's giving his children the biggest gift of all, which is their lives, saving them from burning up and suffering in the fires of affliction in our world. And he gives them a gift beyond their knowing. The kids don't know what they've been given. We don't recognize the presence of the Buddha Dharma and how valuable it is until we start to cultivate. So thank you, Elder. Thank you, Buddha, for taking the trouble, even though we don't listen, to give us something that we don't know even to ask for, and which will indeed save our lives. So that's the analogy. So. Master Chongguan, in as he explains, uh, as he explains this chapter with the cart, may I ride that carriage? May I ride this car? He refers to the great white ox cart in his commentary. So that's where that comes from. Okay. Got a great body of Durrani. Durrani mantras. Hmm. So, Sudhana knows that mantras are important. Interesting. Empathy and compassion are the canopy. They keep the sun off the passengers' heads. And furthermore, it's a beautiful decorated vehicle. When it rolls, it rings. Ooh, it's got a sound system. May I ride in that car? Save me a seat in that car. Its cushions are Brahma practices. What do you suppose Brahma practices are? Well, it's practices that cool off the senses, um, keeping our energies in. Instead of constantly running out, getting high, and partying, partying, where you wake up the next morning with a throbbing head and feeling like you can't really wash clean, um, all the indulgences from the night before, Brahma practices keep us from that. And it, they are cushions because they're truly comfortable inside our bodies. Um, we have this amazing practice called Eightfold Precepts in our tradition. And the Eightfold Precepts are um, giving lay people, I transmitted the Eightfold Precepts yesterday morning right here at Gold Coast Amaro. And the, they're eight, but they are almost the same as the ten precepts of a novice monk or nun. So what the Eightfold Precepts, Bhagwan Zai Jie, what they allow for, they allow lay people to experience their own bodies in the style of a Buddhist monastic for either one day and one night or two days and two nights. Some people do it for seven days and seven nights during the period of the retreat that's going on. And why eight and not ten? The two of them are put together, the precept about uh, entertaining diversions and wide, broad, large beds, comfortable uh, body, comfortable furniture, right? And that one and singing, dancing, and musical instruments. Uh, and the precept on wearing uh, fragrant 
powders, creams, perfumes, and ointments to make your body smell better. Those are put together. The precept against holding money or valuable objects is not transmitted because lay people, we can't ask lay people to divest themselves of their, their wealth uh, when they have children to raise and spouses to take care of. So then the practice of stopping eating at noon. Okay, celibacy is one of the practices of monastics and lay people get to do that for one day and one night and experience not eating after noon and keeping all your energies inside uh, for 24 hours. Now, the reason I'm telling you this is these are Brahma practices and what lay people tell us over and over again. They say, it was so amazing. I just held those precepts for, for 24 hours, but the next day I felt so strong. I felt so rested. I felt so cleansed. And I felt more like myself than ever before. I've never felt so tzadzai, they say, so at home in myself, simply by using the lifestyle of a monk to return all our essential energies to their source, to the body and mind. Amazing, isn't it? Something so simple. So the, the lesson for that is that the precepts are not so much to keep you, to keep things away from you. We don't hold the precepts because we hate the world. We hold the precepts to keep what we fundamentally already have at home, to keep our energy from leaking out. That's the Brahma practices. So it's, it's that turning it on its head. People think, oh, these Buddhists, you take these precepts, know this, know this, know this, no fun. Yeah, but how many times do you get high before you decide that it's a lot the same and it takes longer every time to get undoped, to come back from being dopey after smoking dope? It's like, yeah, you do that for a while and then you go, this is boring. I really need clarity. I really want to not lose my mind all the time. I want my mind. I want it back. So that's Brahma practice. Okay, samadhi is its maidens in waiting. What are maidens in waiting? Attendants. Doesn't have to be female. Flight attendants. So this this vehicle, this car, has got a chauffeur. Okay, and samadhi is drives the vehicle. Dharma drums resound with a wondrous sounds. Again, it's got a sound system in it, so you can as you travel, there's hours on the road, you can sing your favorite song or mantra. Okay, I want to ride in that car with comfortable cushions and attendance taking care of my needs and entertainment. Hmm, I want to reside, ride in that car. Cool. Yeah, Sudhana, this is really good. My little GTO, you're really doing fine. Three, some three throats and a four speed and a 489. Woo-woo, whoa-whoa. Endless, its store of four attractions, decorated with jewels of virtue. Shame forms the halters of its steeds. May I ride in the carriage? Okay, people think, what, 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 what? Endless four attractions. Uh, kind words, gifts, cooperation, and service. Those are the four attractions. fa. Things that bring people closer. Give us gifts, talk nicely, uh, collaborate with them, help them out, and then serve them in ways that are delightful, joyful. And people will come around. You'll be surrounded by people. Decorated with jewels of virtue. Ooh. Jewels of virtue. Diamonds of kindness. Shame forms the halters of its steeds. What is shame? Shame is a wholesome quality. In the Buddha Dharma, they call it 
Shan Fa. It's a wholesome dharma. It's a, a good dharma. Um, it's a um, uh, shame and remorse are considered good dharmas because they remind us that we are not yet Buddhas. And it's really important to keep striving. As soon as we think we're, we're on top of it, oh, after pride comes a fall. Right? So Shurfu, it was amazing how with Master Hua's um, in his Dharma assembly, he would always encourage us to keep our xi qi mao bing, our faults and our habits in front of us because they're shaped over how many lifetimes. And if we keep them in front of us, then they can actually transform. But as soon as we assume all is well, and I'm, uh, I'm really getting there, really making progress. This is, this is I'm I'm doing what I'm supposed to do, right? With that kind of uh, ziman, fullness, inner fullness of self, we lose track of our habits, and our habits, because they're grooved like a river, as we roll down the stream of samsara, those habits own us. And if we're able to say, yeah, you know, um, how much have I really helped the world today? Monks and nuns do this every, every single day. When we do the five contemplations before we eat, we say, uh, Am I worthy of this offering? Somebody else had to work hard for this, and they uh, they provided it to me. Um, what have I done to to repay that kindness? That's what it means. So shame is not external. Shame, shame, shame. Game of Thrones. Uh, it's not that. It's a sense of not there yet need to keep working. Um, it's a very, this is a wholesome dharma. Shame and remorse. Tang kui. And a wish to improve. A wish to keep going. This is what it holds. What is the halter on the steeds? It holds the horses in. It keeps us from uh, forgetting to cultivate. Okay. Let me ride that car. Always turning its wheels of giving forever anointed with pure precepts fragrance. Uh, okay, this is this hard to get this language into something more flowing. This is uh, precepts. It's true that um, when somebody is holding the precepts purely, they smell good. Funny, true. Uh, so, the uh, there's if you go into a Mahayana Buddha hall in a monastery, often in right by the altar, you'll see Jie Ding Chen Xiang. Precepts and Samadhi are truly fragrant. Truly fragrant, and they often uh, would talk about. Um, how cultivators, real cultivators, they may not have washed for weeks and weeks. It's cold in those chan halls, but they they have a real fragrance. The fragrance of the body used in a wise way to uh, transform greed, hatred, and stupidity with precepts, samadhi, and wisdom. Furthermore, and so that carriage, that car, has got this uh, air wick, the air wick of precepts right there. Uh, what do you hang from your rearview mirror? Do you have one of those little Christmas tree 
air purifiers. Mm, you get the idea. Patience is a sturdy adornment, right? Renru is sturdy. You can endure. You can hold on. Hold on. Sturdy adornment. It's pretty, it's adorned, and it's also unbreakable. I want to ride in that car, he says. Okay. We'll, we're going to come back. Clearly, we've only got, let's see here. We've only done one, two, three, four, five. We've done five. We've got another bunch. Next week, we'll have a better grasp of the melody and see if we can't get everybody to sing along. May I ride upon that car? He'll, uh, we can make this a sing-along. All right? So here we have things the uh, any themes of today is the um, incredible uh, here we go how Sudhana in the pages of the Avatamsaka Sutra is a pilgrim he's a young man he's enthusiastic he's energetic He's straight. He's literate. He's a poet, a spoken word poet. This is clearly in the tradition of hip hop. Spoken word poetry. He is, it doesn't, our English doesn't rhyme, so we don't get the rhyming quality. But Sudhan is out here singing his heart out to Manjushri because here's his chance. He sees in Bodhisattva Manjushri his chance to get on the great vehicle and ride to Buddhahood. He is not going to miss his chance. And so there he is. He's on his knees out there saying, please save me a seat on this great vehicle. I want to ride it. And uh, you're, my, you're my teacher. So how good. How good is that? All right. Uh, you know what else? So we're going to come back next week. I want to share something very interesting that folks have not heard about from me before because I just found out about it myself, which is that DRBA has an app for your phone. We do. We do. Get the DRBA app today, Dharma Realm Buddha Association. And it's uh, available on the platform of your choice, be it Google with Android, be it iOS. And if you click here, go to the website, look what comes up. You sign in to the website, you can go to dr, let's see, app.drba.org. There we are. Let's go to the Apple Store. Here it is. Not compatible with my computer. It is compatible with your phone. Here's the um, one of the, the favorite, um, can't expand my screen here. One of the favorite qualities is there's a meditation timer here. There is chanting. You can listen to the Sharangama mantra, the Great Compassion mantra. You can donate should you care to. Um, there are different languages. There's English and Chinese and Vietnamese, uh, I believe. So, and... Next, we also get events. So, DRBU Summer Program, Buddha Root Farm 2024, Map to Buddha Root Farm, Book Club, Meditation Club, Tai Chi Practice, Tech Group, inside of DRBU information here. So, here it is. Uh, this is really ready to go. And we not only need fr friends to download it and put it, to work, we need reviews. 
Here's the meditation timer. It goes ding when the time is up. Something you've always wanted. So, there you go. Uh, this is the Apple Store, but if we go back, we will find the Google Play. There it is. So, you Android users. Very cool. So, let people know about this, and please do uh, check it out. Install it. It's free of charge. Uh, you're certainly welcome to add any review or feedback, how to make it better. Alrighty, there you go. Now, also, uh, Chinese dot C, Chinese dot G C D R dot com. Did I do it right? Let's see if it comes up. No, I didn't do it right. GCDRChinese.com. Try that again. Here we go. GCDRChinese.com. We are here practicing Emperor Liang's repentance, and folks are welcome to join in, should you care to. Here's go to GCDR.com. Is it dot GCDR Chinese? One word, GCDRChinese.com. Okay. Um, by the way, oh, I'm sure glad I thought of this. Um, next week, for those of you here in Australia, for China and Taiwan, Hong Kong, Singapore, Malaysia, Vietnam, one hour earlier next week. Next week, we start at 1230 Australia Eastern Time. 10:30 Taiwan China time. So uh, please, 你们大家要注意哈，下个礼拜早一个小时。So 10:30 in Taiwan, 12:30. We started at 1:30 today. We're going to start an hour earlier next week because America has daylight savings. That's why. Here is the announcement for Liang Huan Bao Chan, and if you want to listen in. Join in. Here's a way to do it. You can shoot that QR code with your phone on the screen. I'll wait. There you go. Okay, that'll take you to the Zoom session. Here's the Zoom ID if you want to shoot that with your phone. GCDRChinese.com. 欢迎大家踊跃线上参加。All sessions live on Zoom.、Uh, seven to eight, I give a Dharma talk tonight and every night this week. Alrighty, there we go. Well, the time has come. Thank you again for, with me, exploring、uh, Sudana's wonderful journey. And. We'll continue with the song next week. Please make a wish.
This world of pain turns into paradise. May all become compassionate and wise. May all become compassionate and wise. May all become compassionate and wise. You're welcome to join me as we bow to the Buddha, right from where you're sitting if you like. In respect to the Venerable Master, that's going to do it for us for today. See you all next week. Omitofo, everybody. Bye bye now.